lovely listeners, and welcome back to Willow's Wonderful Tales. Today I'll be continuing the story of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Chapter 7. A Mad Tea Party There was a large table under a tree in front of the house, and the March Hare and the Hatter were having tea. A Dormouse was sitting between them, fast asleep. The other two were using it as a cushion and resting their elbows on it. It must be very uncomfortable for the Dormouse, thought Alice, but being asleep, I suppose it doesn't care. The table was long and was set for company, but the three were all crowded together in one corner of it. There's no room, no room, they cried when they saw Alice coming. There's plenty of room, said Alice, and she sat down in a large armchair at the end of the table. Have some lemonade, the March Hare said invitingly. Alice looked all around the table, but there was nothing on it but tea. I don't see any lemonade, she remarked. There isn't any, said the March Hare. Then it wasn't very nice of you to offer it, said Alice. It wasn't very nice of you to sit down without being invited, said the March Hare. I didn't know it was your table, said Alice. It has plenty of room. Your hair needs cutting, said the Hatter. He had been looking at Alice for some time with great interest, and this was his first comment. You should learn not to make personal remarks, Alice said. It's very rude. The Hatter opened his eyes very wide, but all he said was, Why is a raven like a writing desk? Good, now we'll have some fun, thought Alice. I'm glad they began asking riddles. Out loud, she said, I think I can guess that. Do you mean that you think you can find out the answer to it, said the March Hare? Exactly so, said Alice. Then you should say what you mean, the March Hare went on. I do, Alice replied. At least, I mean what I say. That's the same thing, you know. It's not the same thing, said the Hatter. You might as well say that I see what I eat is the same thing as I eat what I see. Or, you might as well say, added the March Hare, that I like what I get is the same thing as I get what I like. Or, you might as well say, added the Dormouse, who seemed to be talking in his sleep, that I breathe when I sleep is the same thing as I sleep when I breathe. It is the same thing with you, said the Hatter, and everyone was silent for a minute. Alice thought over what she could remember about ravens and writing desks, which wasn't much. The Hatter was the first to break the silence. What day of the month is it, he said to Alice. He had taken his watch out of his pocket and was looking at it. Then he shook it and held it to his ear. Alice thought to herself a little and then said, The fourth. Two days wrong, sighed the Hatter. Alice looked over his shoulder with interest. What a funny watch, she remarked. It tells the day of the month and it doesn't tell what o'clock it is. Why should it, muttered the Hatter. Does your watch tell you what year it is? Of course not, Alice replied. But that's because it stays the same year for a long time. Which is just the same case as mine, said the Hatter. I don't quite understand you, Alice said as politely as she could. The Dormouse is asleep again, said the Hatter, and he poured a little hot tea upon its nose. The Dormouse shook its head and said without opening its eyes, Of course, of course, just what I was going to say for myself. Have you guessed the riddle yet? the Hatter said, turning to Alice again. No, I give up, Alice replied. What's the answer? I haven't the slightest idea, said the Hatter. Nor I, said the March Hare. Alice sighed. I think you should do something better with the time, she said, than wasting it asking riddles that have no answers. If you knew time as well as I do, said the Hatter, you wouldn't be talking about wasting it. Time is a hymn. I don't know what you mean, said Alice. Of course you don't, the Hatter said, tossing his head. I bet you've never even spoken to time. No, I haven't, Alice replied, but I know I have to beat time when I learn music. Ah, that's it, said the Hatter. Time won't stand beating. Now, if you only kept on good terms with him, he'd do almost anything you liked with the clock. But, alas, the Hatter shook his head mournfully. I just had an argument with time last March, just before he went mad, you know, pointing with his teaspoon at the March Hare. It was at the great concert given by the Queen of Hearts, and I had to sing, Twinkle, twinkle, little bat, how I wonder what you're at. Do you know the song? I've heard something like it, said Alice. It goes on, you know, the Hatter continued, in this way. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle. Here the Dormouse shook itself and began singing in its sleep. Twinkle, 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 and went on so long that they had to pinch it to make it stop. Well, I'd hardly finished the first verse, said the Hatter, when the Queen jumped up and yelled out, He's murdering the time! Off with his head! How terrible, exclaimed Alice. And ever since that, the Hatter went on in a mournful tone, he won't do a thing I ask. It's always six o'clock now. Is that the reason so many tea things are put out here, she asked. 
Yes, that's it, said the Hatter with a sigh. It's always tea time, and we've no time to wash the things in between. Then you keep moving around the table, I suppose, said Alice. Exactly, said the Hatter, as the things get used. But what happens when you come to the beginning again, Alice asked. Let's change the subject, the March Hare interrupted, yawning. I'm getting tired of this. I vote the young lady tells us a story. I'm afraid I don't know one, said Alice. Then the Dormouse shall, they both cried. Wake up, Dormouse, and they pinched it on both sides at once. The Dormouse slowly opened his eyes. I wasn't asleep, he said in a hoarse, feeble voice. I heard every word you fellows were saying. Tell us a story, said the March Hare. Yes, please do, pleaded Alice. And be quick about it, added the Hatter, or you'll be asleep again before it's done. Once upon a time, there were three little sisters, the Dormouse began in a great hurry, and their names were Elsie, Lacey, and Tilly and they lived at the bottom of a well. What did they live on? asked Alice. They lived on treacle, said the Dormouse, after thinking a minute or two. They couldn't have done that, you know, Alice gently remarked. Treacle is just syrup. They'd have been ill. So they were, said the Dormouse, very ill. But why did they live at the bottom of a well? Alice asked. Have some more tea, the March Hare said to Alice very sincerely. I haven't had any yet, Alice replied, so I can't have any more. You mean you haven't had any less, said the Hatter. It's very easy to take more than nothing. Alice did not know what to say, so she poured some tea and took some bread and butter, and then turned to the Dormouse and asked again. Why did they live at the bottom of a well? I want a clean cup, interrupted the Hatter. Everyone move over one place. He moved on as he spoke, and the Dormouse followed him. The March Hare moved him into the Dormouse's place, and Alice unwillingly took the place of the March Hare. The Hatter was the only one who got a clean cup from the moot. Alice was worse off than before, as the March Hare had just spilled milk into his plate. The Dormouse had closed its eyes by this time and was going off to sleep. The Hatter pinched it, and it woke up with a little shriek and went on. They were in the well, learning to draw. They drew things that begin with M, such as mouse traps and the moon and memory, and muchness. You know, you say things are much of a mus muchness, but did you ever see drawing of a muchness? I am very confused, said Alice. I don't think... Then you shouldn't talk, said the Hatter. Alice had certainly had enough. She got up and walked off. The Dormouse fell asleep instantly, and neither of the others cared or noticed that Alice had gone. She looked back once or twice, hoping they would try to call her back. The last time she looked, she saw them trying to put the Dormouse into the teapot. I'll never go there again, said Alice, as she made her way through the woods. Then she noticed that one of the trees had a door leading right into it. That's very curious, she thought. I may as well go in it. And in she went. Once more, she found herself back in the long hallway and close to the little glass table. This time I'll get this right, she said. She took the little golden key off the table and unlocked the door that led into the garden. Then she nibbled on the right-hand bit of mushroom until she was about a foot high. She then walked through the little door and at last found herself in the beautiful garden.